Hello everyone, welcome to 3Dedesignacademy.com. In this lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to blend a feature onto a flat surface. So these are the set of surfaces I have set up. Um, as you can see, it's sort of like a triangle feature uh, and I'm going to attempt to blend it nicely onto this one over here. So uh, first thing that you need to know is the primary surfaces. So if they are not good or if the ref uh, reflections are no good or if the primary surfaces are not touching, or uh, then you need to adjust it. Uh, but you gotta make sure that everything's nice and clean and make sure that it's sensibly uh, structured. So right now I have all the surfaces the, touching the, uh, all the primary surfaces touching nicely each, uh, to each other. So I'm going to go ahead and start the blending process. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to blend this one into this one. But before that, I do need to uh, set up some curves because I do want, uh, when I do the surface fillet, I want uh, uh, basically the edges to flow nicely. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a curve like this and I'm going to snap it over here and I'm going to cut this one like this so that the, uh, the fillet, uh, when I do an edge line, it's just going to flow nicely over here. And I'm going to do the same thing over on this side. So I'm just going to go ahead and project uh, a set of CUS like this onto this flat sheet over here. And let's go ahead and I'm going to divide it so that this is a separate entity and this one is also a separate surface like this. Now I don't need the curves anymore so I'm just going to go ahead and delete it and let's go ahead and grab surface filler over here. Um, I think I'm going to use existing theoretical, whether you use cord or not, that's up to you. Now I'm going to set it to G2, of course the quarter length, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. So let's see if uh, form factor, I'm going to set it to one and let's uh, give that a shot. I'm going to uh, click this one and this one and make sure the uh, arrows are pointing the right direction like this. And I'm going to say build. Oh, actually, you know what? I don't have, okay, so this one. Uh, I have to, I have it to existing theoretical, but obviously I didn't project this one uh, or, the, or the CUS onto this one. So I actually have to use, instead of existing theoretical, I have to say build theoretical. So let's grab those and let's go ahead and do that. All right, so it is set to auto, which sometimes works, but sometimes as you can see, it's not working over here. So I'm just going to set everything to edge align. And this one, I'm going to set it to default like this. Uh, now that's it, however, I think I want the fillet to be a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, instead of 50, I think I'm going to double in size. And I think that's a much better, uh, smoother transition over here. So I think that's good. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is I do need to blend this one onto the surface over here. Now there are two options. You can either do a surface fillet like this, so I believe this is about 50. Uh, so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and let's just do default because if I do edge align, uh, well, right now there's no edge aligned uh, surfaces to edge align. So I'm just going to do this. Now you can do this, which will create a nice highlight. But if I'm just uh, doing a blend over here, what I actually prefer to do is just to do a freeform blend. So here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I believe this is a 50 mil offset. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to offset these curves uh, 100 mils. So I can use curve offset like this so that it's about, well, basically it's a, a range from here to here and with the theoreticals in the middle. So I'm going to actually turn off blend like this and I'm going to use this in order to do the blending. So I'm just going to project over here. That's good. I don't need the COSs anymore. So uh, not the COS, I don't need the curves anymore. So I'm just going to get rid of that. And before I do, I do want to make sure that the primaries are set up nicely. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete the construction history over here. And I'm actually going to untrim this back to the theoretical. And now the reason why I do this is because I want to see the structure um, to the theoretical. I want all the surfaces to make sure that they're uh, back to the theoretical so that I know uh, how I know how it's structured. Otherwise, it's as the, now this is a pretty simple model, but as the models uh, become a little bit more complicated, you might get lost and try to do blend uh, weird blends. So it's always a good idea to just get back to the theoretical, just get back to the basics and make sure that everything is going to work out nicely. All right, so now I'm going to grab a freeform blend. It's going to G2 on one side. It's going to position on the other and I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to grab this one like this. Of course, it's not going to be edge line. Uh, I'm going to, this one I'm going to say blend because right now it's touching the ground. So basically, 
if you see this one, actually, let me just hide this. You see that it is blending nicely. It's a very smooth transition from here to here. And also you'll notice that the theoretical is touching this surface over here. So that means I can also extend the blend from here and here, which is going to continue nicely from this one. All right, that's it, however, when you're doing a free form blend like this, you gotta make sure of the surface structure. And let me tell you why. Right now I have this to edge align. Uh, edge align connect ends, it's going to yield the same result. Now I'm gonna copy and paste it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a default on this one. Now I'm going to project this one and notice the CV structure difference. Even though it's the same parameter, it's the same tool and relatively similar structure, because of this is set to a diagonal like this, from here to here, you will see that there is a little bit of difference. Now, when, when I'm doing a freeform blend, I do prefer to keep things somewhat uh, on a default setting uh, because uh, the surface has become a little bit more predictable. So I'm just going to do this. All right, so now that this is set up, I'm just going to go ahead and delete the construction history over here. And basically, I'm going to do a filler from here to here. So it's always primary first, then secondary, which are fillets. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and trim this one over here. I'm going to say keep, and let's go ahead and do the same thing on this side. So let's go ahead and grab a curve over here like this. I'm going to snap a curve over here as well. And let's just go ahead and project. Uh, right now I have it to Z, that's, which is fine. I'm just going to get rid of the curves like this and let's go ahead and trim this one. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this one over here. All right, I don't need these curves. So let's get rid of those. And I'm just going to do a square. So it's going to be one, two, three, and four. And one is going to be curvature. Three is going to be curvature. And four needs to be curvature too. Now that's our word. looks like it's, um, well, creating a bit of a mess. So let's go ahead and do an explicit control. And it's going to be five and five. And it looks like, unfortunately, the curvature is failing on this side. So let's go ahead and take a look. So I'm just going to grab the surface continue tool, show max label show come on like this. And I'm just going to check it over here, check it over here and check it over here. All right, so it's 1.0. Now, if you get exactly 1.0, especially in a setting like this, it probably is due to the fact that this surface is completely flat. So the curvature checker in alias and sometimes does have an error uh, when the surface is flat. Basically, it's kind of like dividing by zero. Um, so that's why it's happening. So, but sometimes it does, uh, a line can solve this. Now, it doesn't mean it's not curvature. It is actually a curvature, but just the checker that's causing a bit of a problem. All right, so let's go ahead and align this one and see if that will solve it. Oh, you know what? In this case, it did. So it's curvature there. So pretty happy with that. All right, so delete the construction history over here. And let's go ahead and untrim this one like this. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one over here. Actually, you know what? Let's just delete it. And this time, instead of using uh, basically building through a theoretical, I know what I'm going to do. So uh, I'm just going to skip ahead and just do a freeform blend between here and here directly. Okay, of course, this one does have to be default. And this one, I'm just going to say default also. And I'll let's just check the continuity. So I'm just going to project here uh, and that should be good. And let's just go ahead and check the surface continue over here. That's curvature there and it is curvature over here. Okay, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just delete the construction history and let's actually put it all in this layer. All right, and let's, before I do anything though, let's go ahead and check the highlight. Now, obviously this series is a little bit long and this one is a little bit long too. So I'm just going to go ahead and trim it like this. And let's just check the highlight on each side. And that's creating a really nice transition from here to here. Um, and this surface over here, it's creating a really nice blend to this one. It's kind of like a volcano. Um, so it's just a sloping onwards. So, so very nice transition there. All right, so let's take care of this one. Now, there are a couple of ways to do this. Um, obviously, I'm going to use a curve fillet. So it's going to be core, it's going to be G2. 
uh, and let's just make it something big. I don't know if 100 is going to be enough, but let's see. Okay, so it looks like it's, uh, it might be a little bit small, so 150. Okay, so that's a pretty good size. Now, this you can use to indicate a size for uh, the fillet. Now, if you want to make this a little bit varying fillet, you can always do this one as well. And maybe you want to do, I don't know, maybe 100 like this. And you just co can connect the dots like this over here. And just project and do the square. That said, however, this surface is a nice natural edge, so I don't think it will be a bad idea to make this fillet a little bit bigger and just make it per, uh, sort of perpendicular to, uh, to the side. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete these curves over here and I'm going to make this a little bit larger. So instead of 150, maybe I'll just make it 200 like this. And I'm just going to go ahead and extend these surfaces back like that one over here and one over here. So that's all going to allow me to work with the natural edge, which is actually a lot more convenient. All right, so let's go ahead and delete the construction history on this curve over here. And I'm just going to uh, grab a blend curve because obviously I need one for this side. So I'm just going to grab it like this and I'm just going to make sure the direction is good. This one seems like it is. This one also, so that's good. And I'm just going to do a square and let's see, uh, one is going to be curvature, two, three is going to be curvature, and four, and that looks pretty good. All right, so very nice smooth highlight, um, and I'm just going to delete these curves over here. Now, that's our world. I do need to make sure that it is curvature over here. So let's go ahead and grab this one. I'm going to untrim it like this, and let's delete the COS. And I'm just going to check on this one. Now, that's our world. Uh, let's see. Oh, the C, I think, wait, hold on a second. I don't know why there is a COS over here. I don't know. Oh, that's part of that. Okay. So let's go ahead and, and trim this one. Um, for, sometimes I don't know why the surfaces don't pick. So let's go ahead and untrim and I'm going to go ahead and retrim. Right. And I do need to project all the COSs back onto this one. So let's go ahead and grab this one, this one, this one, and this one like this. And let's go ahead and trim. All right, delete the construction history, and I'm just going to check the continue on this one. Okay, so it's exactly 1.0. Um, so I'm going to see if I can get curvature. Now, it doesn't mean curvature is failing, it's just how it calculates it against the flat surface. So let's gra uh, go ahead and grab a line. I'm going to see if I can get curvature here. And okay, so according to this, it's failing curvature over here, but let me see if I can do a little bit of manipulation to get those to actually read curvature. So I'm just going to grab these two CVs over here. I'm going to say NUV and I'm going to set the mouse sensitivity to 5000 like this. And let's see if I can get it. Oh, okay. So I'm just going to shift this one over here. And there's curvature over there. Let's see if I can do the same thing on this side. And there's curvature there. All right, so pretty happy with that. So I think the only thing that I have to do is project this one. And let's go ahead and check the continuity. Okay, so that's position over there. So trim that one over here. Now, if you want to do a really nice clean trim, what you can do is you can untrim uh, everything over here, delete the COS, and just extend this just a slight, uh, just a little bit like that. And you can just project here, here, and here, like this, and that's going to allow you to create a very clean edge. As you can see over here, there's, uh, let's see, I don't know why, I think there might be a was stacked on top of each other, I think that's why. So, yep, yeah, there we go. Okay, so that looks much better. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete the construction history there. Um, and let's just check the highlights. So now I got a really nice smooth blend on the flat surface onto this feature and that looks pretty good. So the final step is of course combining these two flat surfaces back to one because they were split just to give a, a basically edge to align for this surface. I'm just going to untrim it over here. I'm going to delete these CWSs over here. I'm going to reproject like this and let's go ahead and trim. And there it is. So very nice blend nice smooth surfaces. Now this was a relatively simple example because the surface that I'm blending into is flat. 
So the continuity is a little bit easier to work with, but the same principle applies to, let's say, a little bit more complex situation. All right. Okay, so that is how to blend in a uh, feature into a flat surface like this. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Want to learn Autodesk Alias and digital sculpting? Then become a member at 3ddesignacademy.com where you'll find hundreds of video tutorials ranging from basics, including curve creations, intermediate level tutorials such as this wheel, all the way to class A modeling of the entire car exterior. Interested? Visit 3ddesignacademy.com.